When I first saw trailers for Bob's Burgers 10 years ago, I initially wrote it off as yet another Simpsons knockoff. But it's actually a very charming show with memorable characters and a lot of fun burgers with punny names. What is it? He calls it the Meat Saya. It's beef tartare inside a burger, medium well inside a burger wellington. Is dad gonna die? Maybe, honey, maybe. So a few years ago, my then boyfriend, now husband, got me the Bob's Burgers Burger Book. And in the year 2019, we set out to cook every burger in the book. And I decided to chronicle the experience. I insisted that we'd rank the burgers too so we could determine which ones were the best. In this ranking system, five was life-changing, four was really, really good, three was good, would make again, two was good, but probably wouldn't make again, one was okay, and zero was bad. So here's roughly the first third of all the burgers in the book. New Baconings is a burger we already make all the time. It's just your basic bacon cheeseburger with produce. Upon further examination, you're supposed to make bacony fries on the side, which I'm sure are tasty, but this burger honestly doesn't need any help. It's already really good. We both gave this burger a solid four out of five. Sweaty Palms was the next one we tried. Neither of us had eaten Hearts of Palm before, so we were interested for that reason. Unfortunately, we found the flavor to be way too acidic and salty, and it had that canned food flavor that I hate so much. I gave it a 1, and my husband gave it a 0, so that's a 0 0.5 average. Sympathy for the Deviled Egg. It's basically mashed deviled eggs on a burger. I made this for our tabletop RPG group, and we all liked them. I got ambitious and made my own buns though, which didn't turn out very well, so we tried this burger again recently with better buns, and yeah, it's good. A solid 2.5 out of 5. Chevre which way but loose. I love goat cheese, so we made these burgers for my birthday in 2018. We also used lamb instead of beef though, so it was basically gyros. Not complaining, it was yummy. I think I just would have preferred gyros. 2.5. Don't you for chatter about me. Okay, spoilers, but this was the best burger. It has four cheddar cheeses. Two are melted on top and two are stuffed inside the patty. The recipe in the book called for horseradish cheddar, and since I hate horseradish, we decided to go off script a little. We used buffalo wing cheddar, white cheddar, smoked cheddar, and mild cheddar for our four cheddars, and this is basically the best bacon cheeseburger you'll ever eat. For that, we both gave it a five. Girls just wanna have senna. Oh, girls just wanna have senna. This was the first burger we made after officially starting this quest. An apple stuffed burger with fennel slaw. I loved it and thought it was nice and refreshing. My husband wasn't as impressed though. It got a 2.25 average score. Hit me with your best shallot! Okay, behold, the hit me with your best shallot burger. A bun, arugula, a patty seasoned with thyme, and then these are caramelized shallots and they're seasoned with sage and rosemary and a little red wine vinegar, sauteed them in some butter. This is chevre or goat cheese. Mmm, the shallots, they're coming through, they're very sweet. Not really getting the herbs, but I might just not be there yet. No, I don't really, ooh, there's the herb. Oh, that's good. The thyme in the burger is delicious. I'm not a fan of arugula by itself, but in the burger it works. Good. Joshua next to me, who's eating the burger, says it needs a little more acid. Um, so one could put more red wine vinegar in the shallots. Um, and he says pickles. <laughs> like, that would be it. It got a 1.25 average. A good manchego is hard to find. So I've got the bun and then patty, just seasoned with salt and pepper. This is manchego cheese. It was hard to find and expensive, but I found it and it tastes really good. Actually, I had a little bit. This is fig jam and top it with some caramelized shallots and some baby arugula. Okay, I'm gonna eat this Good Manchego is Hard to Find burger, and I'm gonna somehow manage to do it while I'm holding a camera. Mm. Okay, that first bite had barely any of the fig jam in it, so I need to have another bite. I was worried that it would be too sweet, kind of like the Hit Me With Your Best Shallot burger is, but because there's half as many shallots in this one, and I think I added extra arugula this time. And the fig jam actually like plays really well with the cheese and the cheese, this cheese is moister than the goat cheese. So yeah, I like this burger. We gave it a 2.5 average. 
I've created a monster. I've created a monster burger. We have a bun, a Boston lettuce, a patty with sauteed mushrooms with monster cheese, two slices, kind of sandwiching the mushrooms and ketchup. Okay, I've created a monster. <sighs> Basically a cheeseburger with mushrooms, which I've had before. It's good. It could have done with some mustard and we both gave it a three. Onion tended consequences. We have an onion roll, spring mix, uh, caramelized onions. This patty is seasoned with uh, Italian seasoning and then there's chevre. And let's see how it tastes. Okay, onion tended consequences burger down the hatch. <laughs> I taste a lot of chevre, which is not a bad thing for me. No. The chevre did make it a bit dry though. It only got an average score of 1.25 out of 5. Okay, not part of this book, but I have to give a shout out to Mythical Kitchen Chef Josh's burger with fried onions and pickled jalapenos because we tried this burger next. It was super rich, but intensely flavorful and delicious. We both gave it a four. It's everything. The entire world is contained within this burger. Papaya was a rolling stone. And with the burger pan still sizzling in the background, this is the Papaya Was a Rolling Stone Burger. It's lettuce, a patty that has sriracha folded into it, and then a papaya, mango, avocado, red onion, mint, cilantro, and orange juice salsa. There's a little cayenne pepper in it as well. I made, this wasn't in the recipe, but it seemed awfully dry without it, so I made a just sriracha mayo to go with it as well. I put it on one of my buns. We'll see if I want it on the top bun as well. We found that in spite of all the ingredients, the salsa lacked flavor. To be fair, it would probably be much better in a part of the world where you can actually get good papayas, unlike the Pacific Northwest where we are. We did find out though that sriracha is really good grilled onto hamburger patties, and we both gave it a two. 50 ways to leave your guava. Patty, seared pineapple ring, bacon, and lettuce with a guava barbecue sauce, which is comprised of guava jelly, ginger, rum, tomato paste, soy sauce, and Worcestershire -shir -shir sauce. This one's pretty good. I was worried it would be too sweet, but it was okay. We added pickled jalapenos after the fact, and it was much better. We gave it a 2.5. The Six Scallion Dollar Man. Okay. This is the six scallion dollar man burger. So I added a sriracha mayo, even though it wasn't in the recipe because it didn't have any condiments otherwise, and that is silly. And I thought that sriracha mayo would go super well with it. So I did a sriracha mayo. There's a bed of steamed bok choy in place of lettuce. And then the burger has some ginger in it and salt and pepper. And then this is like a scallion mixture. So basically I was supposed to marinate the scallions in coconut oil, soy sauce, and sesame oil for like an hour and then I warmed it up and added honey. Strange, um, but I think it'll taste good. It smells really good. Obviously an Asian inspired burger. Okay, let's see if I can eat this burger with one hand without making, nope, I can't eat it with one hand without making a giant mess. Let's do this. This is why I haven't been filming myself eating all of the burgers. Hmm. <laughs> It's barely reading burger to me, but it's really tasty and the sriracha mayo. Definitely need that in there. I like it. It got a score of 2.5. Summertime burger. It is a patty that has fresh thyme and rosemary and feta in it. And then this is a grilled piece of watermelon that I cut out with this miso soup bowl. And there's feta and mayo and lettuce. This burger really felt complete. Maybe it could do with a little pickled onion? The watermelon got really mellow and acted sort of like tomato, and the herbs came through beautifully. We both gave it a three. Don't get creme fraiche with me. It's a blueberry and breadcrumb stuffed patty with creme fraiche basil sauce and some lettuce. A very, like, simple burger. And this is like my second time or third time in my life ever having creme fraiche. <laughs> So for all the effort of the blueberries and breadcrumbs in the patty, they really did nothing for the flavor. It was a very juicy burger overall though, otherwise nothing that remarkable. We both gave it a two. Pima, 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 chameleon. 
This is the Parma 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 Chameleon Burger. It's kind of like a meatball sub, really. It's just a garlic stuffed patty topped with blueberry marinara sauce. It's like marinara sauce with blueberries in it. Parmesan cheese, basil instead of lettuce, and then these are, I already have one of these and they're delicious. They are herbed, breaded, uh, Parmesan crusted, deep fried zucchini chips. Once again, the blueberries did nothing. Also, this was so close to a meatball sub, I'd rather just have a meatball sub. Those zucchini chips are definitely a keeper, though. It got a score of 2.5. It was an itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot zucchini. This was a burger with a sauce that had minced yellow bell pepper in it, for the polka dots, I assume, and sauteed zucchini on it. I added garlic, salt, and pepper to the sauce, and I liked it, but my husband said it was bland. The peppers did nothing for it too, to be fair. I baked the sweet potato fries and they didn't turn out well, but since then I've learned how to make really good deep fried sweet potato fries. Anyway, this burger was meh. My husband gave it a zero, he straight up didn't like it, but I gave it a two, so it got an average score of one. Yay! Edward James Olive Most. This is the Edward James Olive Most Burger. It is a feta stuffed burger with an olive tapenade. That's it, it's very simple actually. Uh, the olive tapenade is green and Kalmata style olives with a little garlic and olive oil. And then, I don't know why, but it comes to the side, I, I forget what happened in the episode that this burger was in, but it comes with a side of sauteed zucchini with some fresh oregano in it. <laughs> I think it could probably use some mayo, but we'll see. Yes, Sarah from the past, it definitely could have used some sauce. Either mayo, yogurt, or even a juicy fresh tomato slice, just something wet. It had some good flavors, but it was a bit simple. We both gave it a two. Bruschetta about it. This is the Bruschetta about it burger. It's a patty with a little melted fresh mozzarella cheese and bruschetta. <laughs> Pretty basic. Okay, I love bruschetta, but I think I prefer actual bruschetta over this burger. It was very sloppy to eat and the top bun got soggy pretty quick. It got a score of 2.5. Sit in spinach. It is a patty that has sauteed garlic and spinach inside of it. And then it's an interesting technique. You saute the patties in red wine vinegar and lemon juice, and then you top it with melted mozzarella cheese, spinach, and tomato slices. Okay, I didn't expect to be too impressed by this burger, but it was really good. All the flavors came through nicely, and it was very spinachy in a good way. We both gave it a three, and yes, I should definitely make this again sometime. Mission accomplished. It is a taco seasoned patty topped with queso fresco and homemade corn salsa. And it's supposed to have arugula, but as we have discussed earlier, I don't like arugula. So I'm just using butter lettuce instead. I imagine this is going to be kind of like a gringo taco. The patty itself was the best part. The taco seasoning gave it some nice flavor. The corn salsa was messy and probably would have worked better as a stuffing. We both gave it a two. I know why the Cajun burger sings. I know why the Cajun burger sings is easily the most complicated burger in the entire cookbook. Look at all the steps. Basically, you make gumbo, you mix that with rice, and you stuff the burgers with that, and then there's interesting fixins. So I made the smallest batch of gumbo ever in the history of the universe. I had like a tiny, tiny bit of leftover roux, and that's just what I used as the base uh, amount for this. <laughs> a little tiny bit of rice. And I mix them together and this is my burger filling. I know why the Cajun burger sings. We have uh, sauteed collard greens and garlic and olive oil. And then this burger, it is double patty stuffed with gumbo. There is like actual gumbo with rice inside of this burger patty. And then you're supposed to just serve it with some hot sauce. And here's a cross section. As you can see, it's a lot of gumbo and rice on the inside. Since this is a really weird one, I'm going to do it on camera. I was worried it would be too dry because there's no condiments, but the gumbo is nice and moist. Tastes good. At the end of the day, though, I'd rather just eat gumbo. My husband didn't like it at all, but Hermione did. It got an average score of one. Shootout at the Okra Corral. Shootout at the Okra Corral Burger. We have a seasoned patty, lettuce, homemade ranch, fried green tomatoes, and fried okra. The fried green tomatoes provide a great moisture, crunch, and flavor. I used to not like ranch dressing, but homemade ranch is yummy, and it worked really well on this burger. Fried okra is always a good thing, too. We gave it a 2.5. After a solid year of cooking and eating many burgers, we, uh, 
kind of ran out of steam with the quest late 2020. I was getting sick of all those burgers and most of the time my husband would have just preferred a more classic burger so it didn't really feel like it was worth the effort. But it was fun and interesting trying all those different flavors with burgers and there are definitely a few flavors and techniques I'm keeping like frying burgers in sriracha, using manchego or munster cheese instead of cheddar, and oh my god those zucchini crisps. And now that some time has passed I'm ready to take on the remaining 48 burgers in the book. You can expect a part two to this video in the spring. In the meantime, here's our top five Bob's Burgers so far. So for fifth through third place, we have a three-way tie between the summertime, I've created a Munster and Sit and Spinach Burgers at six out of 10 points for an average of three, which let me remind you stands for good would make again. In second place, we have New Baconings, which again is really just your basic classic bacon cheeseburger, but it's classic for a reason, I guess, with an average score of four, which stands for really, really good. Also, if mythical chef Josh's burger counted, it would share second place. And at first place, with a perfect score of 10 out of 10, don't you for cheddar about me, showing you that all you need to make a tasty burger is a lot, and I mean a lot, of fat. That was it for part one of my Bob's Burger Burger series. A special shout out to all the patrons who help keep the lights on with this channel. And I hope this video gave you some ideas and inspiration to get creative with your own burgers, and maybe I'll see you again in part two. Bye!